Great to see you. We were talking earlier about what, what life is like for the professional athlete in the offseason. And C said you get up, you work out for like three hours, then you count your money, then maybe you work <laughs> out again. What, what, what's the, uh, the offseason been like for you? Uh, offseason's becoming really smooth. Uh, rookie year was kind of had you kind of got to find your track, kind of find a routine to get into. Um, this offseason, uh, it was it was real smooth for me. Just been out in L.A. working with some of my teammates, hanging out. Um, and then this summer, the little break we get in the summer, just stayed around here, stayed at the facility, and just getting ready for camp. So it, it's pretty smooth. A little fun, a little bit of fun, What's a little What's the most vacation. fun thing you've done, the, the non-football stuff? Uh, we took a – some of my, uh, my teammates and I took a trip to Costa Rica, and they have this, like, the world's, like, longest zip lining tour. Oh, yeah. And nice. when I say it was insane, it was crazy. Like, monkeys were under us as we're zip lining. We got big birds flying, like, next to us. It was, it was kind of scary, but it was fun. Now, the first two years in the league, I, I try to tell people all the time, the experience of playing in the league is even better than what you dreamt of when you got mm -hmm. there. Exactly. Your experience being here – with the New York Football Giants for two years, going around the league, how has that prepared you for success in year number three? Uh, it's taught me a lot. Um, it's taught me a lot about dealing with adversity. Um, this this media market up here is crazy. Um, definitely have to kind of stay focused, and, and it taught me that. And um, just the, just the kind of the, the bumps and the bruises I went through, kind of learn how to take care of my body. Um, it's just really just turned me into a professional. So um, definitely uh, everything happens for a reason, um, and definitely want to win more games. And I wish two years were a little bit more better on the success level uh, as a team. But um, everything happens for a reason, and the things I learned in the next two years, I'm really excited going into this year. Uh, knowing what I have under my belt. Chris says all the time that even if a player's numbers don't necessarily show it, every guy in year three is better as a football player than they were in year two. Like we were talking about Dak. Mm -hmm. Dak's year one was unbelievable. Year two, he comes back to the pack. And Chris was adamant going into last season. I don't care what the numbers say. He's better because he knows so much more football. When you think mm -hmm. about your level of football sophistication, if you will, the day you get drafted out of Ole Miss to where you sit here today, how much better, not just physically, but mentally of a football player do you find yourself a couple years later? Uh, the games are slowed down. Um, when you, when you come in as a rookie, everything's kind of spinning. Uh, you're trying to, you're trying to uh, make your mark and, and find your niche in the team and, uh, and trying to earn a starting job. And so there's a lot of things spinning, trying to learn a new playbook, you learn new teammates, and trying to uh, just get comfortable. Uh, but, but coming into year three, the game is more slowed down. Uh, more healthy uh, and, and um, opportunities to make big plays. Uh, kind of more excited about, uh, especially coming out. You're in the slot. You, you're reading coverages, or you see you have a linebacker or a safety on either a man zone. All that stuff just kind of starts coming natural. And when the game slows down, uh, you start playing more comfortable. That's when you can kind of get get in your bag, and, and it, that's that's how it is going to be uh, for me. Uh, this game just more slowed down, and it's going to be more fun. Evan, there's some good things and there's some not so great things about playing in <clears throat> New York and on this stage. The great thing is, this is the media capital of the world. It's you're in New York City, you get to have fun. You're, the Giants are always highlighted, but the last couple of years haven't been such smooth sailing for this mm -hmm. Giants team. You had a lot of controversy with whether Eli should still be playing, and then you draft Daniel Jones, and then and then Eli and then um, rather Odell leaves last year, which I'm sure was a little bit of a surprise. How distracting has and then the record and how you guys have been playing. I'm yep. sure you know far underwhelming for the for the, the giant standards that you usually have what's the last couple of years been like for you how have you been able to handle it as a player uh it's you kind of just got to realize uh, you can can only you can only control what, what's in your control um and i know that's doing everything i can uh, for my team and doing the most i can to put them in better positions on sundays um and, and lead in the locker room and, and, be, and be better and be a better player for the team so um definitely a lot of distractions you got to kind of block all those out um, Which distraction do you think surprised you the most of everything that's happened the last couple of years? What were you most surprised We have an ongoing by? debate about the media. Yeah. Now, you mentioned it. He went to school at Ole Miss. It ain't like they is a, a treasure trove of reporters covering <laughs> Ole Miss compared to the reporters <clears throat> that cover the Giants. So I could see him being surprised. How much of an adjustment was that coming from SEC, Ole Miss, to New York football Giants? Um, I, th I think in college, as you said, there wasn't a lot of reporters um, going crazy about what we were doing. Uh, but the thing that kind of had to adjust to was just the everybody's so obsessed with the negativity, uh, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, you can kind of tell the difference. Uh, when, when we're losing and there's turmoil, those reporters come in the locker room running, sprinting. 
and ready to ask questions, ready to, ready to stir up some drama. So um, it's just, it's just, you just got to kind of try to be able to uh, neglect the things that can distract you um, and just stay focused on uh, doing what you can every single day to be a better player uh, and make your team better. Right. There's a number of people that would say OBJ was a distraction the last couple of years. Your experience with him, I believe, is very, very different. Yep. You and him are friends not only on the field but off the field. Um, I believe when you went to Los Angeles, you probably spent some time with OBJ, not only working out but doing other things. What did you learn <clears throat> from him from a football standpoint, and what did you learn after hearing about him getting traded? Uh, I, I love having Odell as a teammate. Um, he was, uh, uh, despite all the things in the media, he was great in the locker room. He was great um, as a friend. Uh, he'll always be a brother um, as long as, 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 as we stay close. So, um, But the biggest thing I love being his teammate was just watching him every day. Um, the dude's by far one of the best football players I've ever seen. Um, and uh, just watch him every day, whether it's just, just catching balls, his releases, uh, the top of his routes. Um, just him as a football player, uh, was, I had to take advantage of that. Um, and, it, it, and being his teammate helped my game, and it's helping me develop, and it's helping me become a better football player. Um, and, uh, and, and, you know, like I said, those things that happen this offseason is out of my control. At the end of the day, I'm still a, a, a New York football giant. I still play for the Giants, so my job is to... to, to to keep working and keep being better and keep growing as a player so that can be better. And Did it make, after seeing Odell traded, because it shocked a lot of Giants. Yeah. I talked to a few of them. But it also made them, their alert button went up that, man, if he got traded, anything could happen to me. Did you feel that way? Uh, it's it's hard not to, yeah. It's, it's really hard not to, um, especially when... When, when the business isn't going as, as, as a business should be going, there's going to be changes that are made, um, and, and, and this league, nobody's safe. So it's definitely, a, like I said, those distractions are kind of hard to, to, to keep away. Um, but like I said, just got to stay focused and, and, and can worry about what you can control. What do you think of Saquon, his rookie year? Unbelievable. Um, I think the biggest thing with Saquon is obviously he's a special talent um, and, and he's, he's a crazy football player, but he's a natural leader. Uh, he's a real natural leader. He, as soon as he came into the locker room and, and got settled and got comfortable on the field, uh, he, was, he was motivating guys. He was pushing guys. He pushed me to become better. Um, he's pushing guys on defense. How to does better. a guy like that push you to be better? D d take me through. Either words, example. I would say example. I, I think it, it all comes down to competition. Uh, the more you can compete, Every single day, um, the more better you're going to be as a player when it's time to play against somebody not on your team, and that's something that he started. He kind of brought to our team that was that was that wasn't that was missing a little bit. Just having those little small competitions, whether it's sprints or whether we're in practice and team periods, going against the defense. And when you start getting that dog mentality and you start getting that competition, um, you want to win. Uh, that's going to help us on Sundays. He also, you, you alluded to it. We, we've had him on the show a couple times. He was shockingly polished and poised oh, yeah. for someone as young as he is. When you saw his rookie class, your rookie class was the one right before his, did not just his talent, his athleticism, but his, I'll use the word again, polished, did that strike you as almost mature beyond his years? Definitely. I mean, obviously, uh, he was very, um, very talented coming out of college and had a lot of expectations on him, and, um, a lot, and especially getting drafted to the Giants. I mean, it was a lot coming at him. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, from day one, he came in just smooth, real humble, um, and understood that there was a lot of work to do, and understood that um, that that is a process to become a great. And so uh, that's the biggest thing. Just his maturity coming in and, and his leadership skills coming in was very, uh, very, very good to see, and is very good for our team. You guys drafted a quarterback this year in Daniel Jones. Tell me a little bit about the dynamic between Daniel and Eli and what their relationship is like. And have you caught any balls yet from Daniel? Oh, yeah. Uh, Daniel has, has, has been doing a really good job. We, he got in OTAs and got settled and um, started getting comfortable and, and, and learned the system. And Eli has been a great pro that he always been, um, you know, some guys, they draft a young quarterback, and you kind of, towards the end of your career, you might feel some type of way. Uh, you, can't, you can't see that with Eli. He's doing everything he can to help Daniel. And, and at the end of the day, Daniel's pushing him as well. And Daniel's pushing him to be a better player. So it's been really cool to see those guys mesh and, and how they work together in the, in the quarterback room. And, and Daniel's going to, uh, Eli's going to make Daniel a lot better, a way better quarterback and vice versa. So um, it's been cool to see both of them work together and, and, and see Daniel grow over the past f a couple months he's been here. What is Eli like as a teammate? We see him on the field. People have their opinions of his level of play, but Eli is an elder statesman and is a guy who obviously 
obviously has been the face, the face of this franchise for almost two decades now. You're you're not quite young enough to be his son, but his nephew at least. <laughs> like, what is he like as a teammate for you? <laughs> Uh, Eli's one of the guys. Uh, he's definitely uh, just a little bit more quieter, uh, uh, more, uh, uh, more kind of soft-spoken. Uh, but he's he's a jokester. He likes putting pranks on guys. He's he got some really lame riddles that he tries <laughs> to spit out. That he dad tries to spit out. Yes. To, yeah, dad jokes. So um, it, it, he, he's cool to be around. He's just one of the guys. And you would think coming in, I'm thinking like, oh, he's just always to himself, or it'd be hard to talk to. No, he's, he's, a, he's a great friend and a great teammate. One thing I see all the time in the league is guys like yourself, they come in with a great deal of confidence because mm -hmm. you just don't get to this level without having confidence. And then earlier in their career, they either have failure, either, wow, they realize this game is a lot harder. This is a big jump even from the SEC to the NFL. And, man, I'm not as good. One of my issues with you, I'm going to tell you this, because you're here, your mom's here. <laughs> when they drafted you, I told Nick Wright, this guy's going to be a star. He's a perfect fit. NFL tight end, prototype right now. Number one is a receiver. Yes, he's a, a, a capable blocker at the end of the line of scrimmage, but he should catch 70, 80 balls early in his career. He might have 1,000 yards. That's not your fault. We know the Giants, their offense, hadn't had the productivity. Do you believe your expectations are back on par when you got drafted after taking a couple steps of, man, this league is difficult. I got injured. It's not easy because initially... You started off to a very hot start. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. Are your expectations <clears throat> back to where they were when you first got drafted? Um, I, I would say they're a little bit higher. Uh, Great. Uh, I think coming in rookie year, uh, it, it came, it kind of came kind of easy to me um, because I learned the offense quick. We started making plays. We had some injuries on offense uh, that kind of allowed me to have a bigger role in the offense, mm -hmm. and it, it kind of was starting to come easy to me. So going into that rookie offseason, that first offseason. I'm like, oh, this this is a breeze. I'm from I'm from to take off and, and and do what I do. And year two comes around and that adversity hit. Some injuries, a couple bad games, another injury. You start missing time and you start you start forgetting like, well, how good am I or how good can I be? So, um, just the way last year ended, uh, I, I was healthy and and start making some plays and getting involved in the offense and start playing better football as a team. So. Going into year three now, is just, those expectations are back, I'll probably say, a lot higher um, than coming in as a rookie. Give me a number, catches and yards this year. If we're at the as end of the year, you've had a good year. We know the Giants, they want them to win. Say the old corporate thing, but you personally, give me a catches, yards for you. 80, 1,200. Okay, let's do that. We're going to write it down. <laughs> I like that. That's the eight. Perfect. Yeah. Awesome. Best wow. tight ends available in the Appreciate league. Gronk retired. Get, uh, Go get it. Evan Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from First Things First or go watch a few segments from our other shows on FS1.